What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. This is for entertainment purposes only. So, we are... We are currently in damage control mode. Last week was... Whew, oh my god. Probably one of my all-time worst weeks ever. I learned a, a very important lesson this week. So... You know, I had this position sitting there for USD JPY. And usually I don't put a stop right away. Like some trades I do, some trades I don't. Like some, you know, sometimes I just want to see price kind of hit that spot. And this is kind of why I stayed away from USD JPY because of how much it moves. When it moves, it moves. Like USD CAD is much more tame, I feel like. It doesn't. It never moves like USD JPY. That's why I always kind of like... Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I didn't have a stop on this. And I'm at, you know, Town Fair Tire in, uh, in Stoughton. And there's no service there. You can go there and check. There is no freaking service there. At least for T-Mobile. And this happened while I was there. And by the time I got back to the job site... It was already too late. <laughs> it was like, oh my god. So, yeah, I, I took a loss on USD CAD because I got stopped out when this thing came flying down. I got stopped out up here and then USD JPY. Obviously, I was like 1600 bucks in the negative. So, my phone never beeped. Usually, I'm like religious about having my phone on me. But I couldn't even get online, so... Yeah, too little, too late, and now I'm trying to uh, recoup. Recoup some money. So uh, I said I, I was said I was gonna just hold, but I saw an opportunity to save myself a, a few hundred bucks, so I went for it. Because when we were here, I was sixteen hundred dollars in the negative. And then we got this little push, and then it came down. And as soon as it took out this this little wick right here, I was like, yeah, it's going back down to the trend line. So I, I jumped out there for a fourteen hundred dollar loss instead of sixteen. And uh, once it hit this trend line, I saw a wick. Then I saw a blue candle. As soon as that candle closed, I entered. I'm in. I threw the same position back down. I was able to save myself a few hundred bucks anyway. And then it pushed. And uh, I've been able to recoup a little over a thousand dollars so far so now what that is the question what will we do now so um so i i see that i'm really not great at reading these charts exact but i don't think anyone is i i think the 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 bigger picture is a little bit easier but you know regardless we have this this channel up on the one hour and what usually happens with channel ups? They break to the downside. Oop, we already did. Look at that. We did on on Friday. And I'm thinking like, well, usually whatever happens on usually whatever happens on Friday continues on Monday. And it's like sometimes you don't know if you have your trend line in the wrong spot because maybe maybe this is it. You know, maybe that's it. No, I I don't think so seems like we reacted from that same spot so yeah to me that looks like a trend line break so I'm thinking when the market opens that it might push back up a little bit for a retest of this this trend line and uh, from there I'm thinking possibly that we do this like, you know, a, a slow correction back down. And this is what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for a slow correction back down into support, which would be, actually, let's make it official. Let's get, uh, I wanna make sure I am seeing this Correct. Uh, 
Yeah, it looks about right there. Okay. So yeah, I'm thinking that we get a, a slow correction back down to this area of support and then get another push up. That's, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And if we can get this, I'll be back where I started. Like no harm, no foul. If we can get this one last push, I'm good. But if we don't, then it's not gonna be good. So I'm thinking that area because of, you know, that, that's where the breakout started. And you can see reactions, a lot of reactions from that level. You know, we came down, hit this, came up, tested it, rejected, then false break. Came all the way back down, touched this trend line again. And then it bounced and it went straight. I mean, straight and just plowed right through it. Test. First, this is the first test of that line. And then, and then kept going. So I'm thinking we got a, a second test. Second test of that area or that trend line before further upside. So what I'm going to attempt is um, as, as soon as price comes up and touches this trend line or somewhere in the middle, I'm going to take profits on this and get out. I'm taking this money and I'm going to place another buy order down here at this trend line. And uh, yeah, my stop loss will probably be below this this swing low back here. Because that is too much. But this I'll be okay with. So yeah, I'm going to be looking for that. That move down for further upside. And we'll see what happens there. But, you know, other than that, I, I shouldn't be buying dollar right now. I knew that was risky. I even said it was risky. So, well, looking at this, it should make that move up because if we look at the dollar, the dollar is channeling down, channeling down. This should break out of this channel to the upside. And if and when it does, this break out of that channel to the upside is going to be my signal. That's my signal to start shorting USD CAD, USD Swiss franc, and possibly trying to get in to NZD CAD. But I want to see the US dollar on the DXY chart. I want to see it break out of that channel. First, I need that break. Once we have that break, I'll be fine. Then I'll start shorting and I'll be comfortable with my decision to just get in and hold. And then from there, I'm going to hold. Treat it like stocks. Start building a position and hold long term and go short. It's so freaking difficult for me to do. I don't know why. It's true. You are your own worst enemy in Forex, man. But I still want to track this. Uh, USD, JPY, and C. Like, okay. My position was uh, right here somewhere. You know, oops. I was wrong. You know, it's it, I'm freaking out. You know, it's pro it probably freaking out for nothing. You know, that's the thing. I'm probably freaking out for nothing. It's because my emotions are tied to the money. You know, it's very difficult to separate your emotions from your money. It's so freaking hard. But I think if you can if you can master that, that you could do great things here. But I'm obviously not that great at it. <laughs> but I'm still here. Not giving up. But I actually want to start. Uh, and I was considering. Maybe pulling half of my money out. Not right away. But maybe pull half of my money out of the foreign exchange. And put it in a personal trading account. And maybe start... Uh, you know, doing the same thing like I'm doing in the foreign exchange, like taking trades, but do it in the stock market with, you know, things that I that I want to to buy, like 
Tesla, Neo, stuff. I mean, stuff like this because um, you know, I've been able to time these. I mean, I think I did pretty good uh, with Tesla and Neo. Like Tesla, I got it three something and 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 four hundred. Went all the way up to eleven hundred. I got out. And I waited until it came down to like seven something and I re-entered and yeah, it went lower. It went to six something, but it was short lived and it went back up. So I am I am in profit there. And uh, Neo, yeah, Neo. I bought it somewhere, I think it was like 12 to 14 bucks. The first time it went all the way up to like 50 to $60 level. Took it, got out. And waited. And when I saw it hit 12, 14, I got back in at 14 bucks. I'm like, hell yeah. Good price. And it's it's starting to head up. Yeah, Lucid, I mean, Mara and Riot were not my best. These were definitely not my best. But they are quickly, quickly recovering here, which is nice. And hopefully this is not just a break, a retest, and lower. I... I really hope so, but, you know, we'll see. But yeah, anyways, that's it. See you later.